want to ask here today, how many uh, veterans have we got here today? Honk your heart or raise your hand. We got any veterans here today? Well, I appreciate all the veterans. I know that they uh, have given their sacrifice for our country, and we need to always honor them. My hat goes off to all of them because of the service that they've done that keeps us free in America. Throughout all the, the different places that we uh, are in, uh, God has blessed America. And we need to pray for her, America's blessing. And its foundations are being attacked today. But uh, we need to ask the Lord to, be, to lead us and guide us and pray for the salvation of those throughout America and the world. This morning, I uh, want to ask you to turn to John, the 8th chapter, and verse 31. John 8, 31. John, chapter 8, verse 31. It goes like this. It says, and we're going to read through verse 40. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, and Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices, practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you'd be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray today that you would speak to our hearts through your word. Make real and plain the message that you're saying. It's so clear in your word. Oh, Lord, may we always have a thirsty heart for the truth. That we may be changed and molded into what you want us to be. To what you call us to be. Jesus, you are Lord, and today we confess you as Lord and Savior of Tupelo. God, I pray you draw people to the cross through this message and through this town today and throughout our lives, throughout your church, who are your church is here. And Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. We give you the praise, the glory for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. Yeah, I, this is neat to be in the parking lot. I, I was thinking about the the church, I think I've shared this maybe once before, but I, the church I used to be a part of it when I was in seminary called Hope Baptist Church. And it really it means hope you can find it, Baptist Church, because we met, met in different places. We'd meet out the Green Oaks Inn, out, out on the west side sometimes. Sometimes it was in the, in the downtown in the, uh, the Hilton Inn, I believe it was. Then it was then in the Holiday Inn South uh, for a little bit one time. But to be in the parking lot, I remember I had a, Sunday school class in a tree one time. The teacher just said, let's go to the tree. So all these guys, all, we just all climbed up in, in the tree and, and, and had Sunday school. And uh, anyway, that was something different. But this is something different today, and I think we're going to end this uh, probably after today. Uh, but uh, do it, get back to where we're, where we're going to be inside. But anyway, uh, John 8, 31. This passage is verse 30. And the question is, 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 is asked here. Let me ask this question. Who are the children of Abraham? Who are the children of Abraham if you were today? And uh, Jesus said to them, If you abide in my word, you are maturely my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
so that the children of Abraham know that they have been slaves to sin. And this group of people here that he's talking to, these Pharisees who were, they're very antagonistic to the message of Jesus. They, Jesus said they, their word, he could not, they could not receive his word. They had issues, they had problems with him. And they could not accept him for who he really was. And it bothered them, the things he said. And, uh, and Jesus said that they, that, uh, that, that they were, that they were, Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. And they would turn around and ride around and say, we're not a slave to anybody. We've never been a slave to anybody. Well, that's maybe true in the sense of being a slave, but they, and, and, but they were actually under the control of Rome. Romans garrisons, Romans army was there, there in Jerusalem. They, had, they were there to keep the peace. But then Jesus said he was talking about being a slave to sin. And that's when they got upset uh, and, and he, and he said, he said that they didn't, uh, they, they didn't think they was a slave to anybody, but they were a slave to sin. You see, as someone who, who is not a child of Abraham, says everything's all right in his life. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm a really good old person. I'm a good person. Uh, I, who, who's, who, who's saying I'm, I've sinned? Who, who, I'm a good person. I'm not a bad person. And this is what people in the world say. Uh, when we're trapped in the world, when the world's trapped us, when we're in our own cocoon, and and we uh, we don't want no one to say anything about our life, it's that we don't we don't believe. The Bible said that all of sin and falling short of the glory of God. That people say, no, that's not true. We say, no, I'm a good person. The Bible says, no, that's not right. Whoever whoever is a practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. And so they were, they were a slave and they didn't know it. That, that, that's the deception that, uh, that the world brings that we think we're our own person, but yet we're a slave to, 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 to the devil and to our father, as he would tell them, who is the devil, and we're, they're a slave to sin. 1 John 1.8 says this. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You know, one of the things about Saul, King Saul would say, I, he said, I haven't sinned. He told Samuel the prophet, I haven't sinned. I've done just exactly what I was supposed to do. He knew he, and he had not done exactly what he, the prophet told him to do. There's a, there's a, uh, this attitude that is so prevalent, that is so clear and easy to see. He's saying the children of Abraham know that they've been slaves of sin. Paul said, my flesh dwells no good thing. He admit that I, I know in, in me I'm, I'm a sinner. And every one of us today, if we're saved, will admit, I know that I have gone the wrong way at different times. I know I have, I have done, I've lied, and I've cheated, and I've done different things that's wrong. I've broken God's law. We know that. And, and so the children of Abraham, the one who follows the steps of Abraham, know if they've sinned. And, and so but what's the, this passage is also saying is that the children of Abraham do the things Abraham did. He says that I know that you are all, the offspring, are offspring of Abraham. In other words, it's the word uh, sperma in Greek. And they were descendants of one that one man, Abraham. Yes, he said, I know you're the offspring of Abraham, but yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you've heard from your father. And he says here in verse 39, Abraham is our father. You know, that was one thing John the Baptist, when they were coming to him at his baptism, a lot of the Pharisees would come. And in Matthew chapter 3, listen to these words. In verse 7, Matthew 3, 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you boot of vipers. You know, John didn't, didn't he called it like it was. <laughs> they were snakes in the grass. They were brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who, who warned you to flee? Are you fleeing? And basically, are you, are you really fleeing just because you're here? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. 
And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. And John says, don't say that. Don't say that you're a descendant of Abraham. Don't say that Abraham is your father. You see, it's not about what John is saying is that they need repentance too. Keep, keep the, uh, your works in keeping with repentance, he said to them. Are you really fleeing from the wrath to come? And so John early on, early on in, in his ministry when they started coming, he told them, he called them snakes in the grass and said, are you, are you truly repenting? Don't say that you need, that you've got Abraham as your father. Don't say today, we, 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 you know, we can say, well, I've been to church. Or I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a, I've done this. I've been baptized. I've read my Bible. I've read it cover to cover. And boy, I'm proud of it. I mean, I, I'm proud of a lot of things you think people might say. I've done this, and I've never done I've never committed adultery, never committed murder. I'm a good person. And John the Baptist will say the same thing. Don't say that you're all right because you do certain things. Don't say you're all right because you've gone to church. Don't say it because you walked the aisle and was baptized. That's not the right answer. And so... The children of Abraham do the things Abraham did. But what did Abraham do? Abraham believed God. God told him he was going to bless him. And, and he was going to have descendants as many as the stars in the sky. He says, count them. He told Abraham, he says, can you count these stars? He says, so shall your descendants be. And God made a lot of other promises to Abraham. And Paul would point that out later on. But he, they believed, they believed God. I want to show, I want to, have you look in look 19.9, the story of Zacchaeus. And when Jesus had told him, said, today I'm going to be with your house, I'm going to come here. I must come to your house today, Zacchaeus. And when he arrived, when Jesus got there, in, in, in Luke 19.8, and Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, behold, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. I'll tell you something, that's, that says a lot to be able to say that, to do that. This guy is going to be give half what he has to the poor, and he's going to restore fourfold to anyone he's stolen from. You know, they were known to steal. They were known to say, well, if it was your taxes, $100, they said, well, that'll be about $150. Or it might have been $200. And, and, or for the year, more than that. And so they, everybody thought of them as sinners. But here's this guy, Zacchaeus, is saying, I give half my goods to the poor. If I defraud of any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. He's going to give times four times the amount he stole back to them. I want you to look what Jesus said. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. You see, Zacchaeus did what did what Abraham did. He believed God. He believed it. He, he believed Jesus was the Lord and he believed in his promises and believed in his word that he was the highest authority in all the land. And he was sovereign. Abraham believed God. Zacchaeus believed Jesus who was God. And honored Jesus as God. Notice he said he also is a son of Abraham. So here he's, he's saying that he's a child, a child of Abraham. You know, children do what, what, their, uh, what their mom and dad does. And that's the definition that he's talking about. He's not talking about, these guys wanted to depend on the fact here in John 8 chapter that they were descendants of Abraham. Oh, we're a Jew. And we're all right. We don't need to repent, John the Baptist, by the way. And Jesus, we have trouble. We have issues with what you're saying. You're not, you just ain't got it right. You need to refine your message a little bit. You're just, and so they were upset with Jesus. They were depending on the fact that they were descendants rather than children. There's a difference, you see. Matter of fact, there are two Greek words here. The descendant is sperma, and the, the children is a word called technon. D different words, and children is defined in the text. It's defined in the text. They do what their fathers do. This Abraham did not do. And so he's saying that you need to do what Abraham did. They, Abraham wouldn't run me off. Abraham wouldn't find a way to want to, be kill, to kill me. Abraham is not going to be uh, getting upset uh, because Jesus is here. 
You know, there's people today that are upset at the church. There's governors, I understand, over this coronavirus that, that has not acknowledged the church. It is it's sad. They just don't they, don't, they haven't done it. But we're here to serve Jesus, who is the higher power. We're here to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's why you're here today, I hope, and I believe. Paul said in Romans, the ninth chapter, something very unique in this, in this regard as well. He said in chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, but it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. Those Sadducees and those Pharisees were Israelites. That they weren't children of Abraham. They were descendants only descendants of Abraham, but not children of Abraham. But he says here, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. In verse 7, and not all are children of Abraham, because they're his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And so he was saying, you know, how many sons did Abraham have? Well, there was Ishmael before, before uh, Isaac. And then God told that Ishmael had to leave because the one who was going to get the inheritance was going to be Isaac, the son of the free woman. Because, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And so Paul very clearly says it's not the, it's not the children of Abraham <clears throat> uh, who are the real descendants it is through Isaac, it is the children of promise. And so there's, there's the, uh, the difference that Paul makes. Uh, the, the, the children who are God's children, who are the children of Abraham, they do what Abraham did, and they believe, they believe God. Paul makes it very plain in chapter 9 here. And not all are children of Abraham because they're his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. So that excluded Ishmael. Now, the children of Abraham are the believers in Jesus. What, this Bible, what the Bible's saying. The true children of Abraham are the believers in Jesus. As we look in, in, in John, the 8th chapter, he says, uh, Abraham did not do these things. So if, the Abra if Abraham, Abraham, he believed God, and so these guys, if they believed God, they would be believing on Jesus. And they, the, the true children of Abraham are the believers in Jesus. And so they missed, they missed, they missed who Jesus was because the sin had so trapped their life. Sin had so trapped them. They were so caught up in the world. They were so caught up in power and ego. And the Satan had so trapped them. As Jesus, he said, their father is the devil. And they, they, were, they were trapped in this world, and they were trapped without being able to see who Jesus was. And Jesus would say, for this purpose I came to this world, that this blind would see, and the see would become blind. Those who are blind are the ones that said, I have sinned. But now I see, like the man that was in John the ninth chapter. But the ones who said, I'm all right, they become blind. They become judged. Because they think they're all right. He just said, for this purpose I came to draw a distinction. He brought a sword. He brought a distinction, a dividing line among people. And the children of Abraham are the ones that believe on Jesus. Look in Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Galatians 4, 21. He says, tell me you who desire to be under the law. This is Galatians 4, 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave woman was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai bearing children of sl for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem. And for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. And she is our mother. For it is written, this is Isaiah 54, 1, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now brothers like Isaac, now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise. The believers in Jesus are the children of Abraham. 
But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. <coughs> what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, the bro so brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. And so Paul and makes us his analogy. Those who believe on Jesus makes the analogy that we're like Isaac. We are the children of promise. Those who believe on Jesus are the ch true children of Abraham. I like the song we sing. Father Abraham had many sons. Well, he's got sons here today who follow in his footsteps. And he's got children, children, children of Abraham all over the world. But the ones who are the believers in Jesus are the, are the children of Abraham. Now I'm going to go back to Romans. <clears throat> Here this morning go back to Romans and that next verse says for what did what this is what the promise said verse 9 about this time next year I will return and Sarah shall have a son and so here's the analogy Paul he he, he weaves his whole message his gospel message uh, through Romans and Galatians and it's, it's the same as John same as Matthew that the children of Abraham are the ones who believe, and the ones who specifically are the ones who believe on Jesus today. If you go back to Galatians chapter 3, in verse 6, it says, Just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, know then that those it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. Now skip down to verse 39. In verse 39. For 28 and uh, I mean 29. Verse 28 and 29. Galatians 3, 28 and 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Here he says in Christ, there's no differences. There's no, there is no Jew and Gentile in Jesus. They're all either you're in or you're out. I'm glad we're in today through Jesus. Verse 29. And if you are Christ, if you, in other words, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. The Bible says we're heirs with Jesus in Romans 8. But he says here that the true heirs are the ones who belong to Christ. We're Abraham and we're Abraham's offspring. The true, the true children of Abraham is the ones that have faith today. Someone might say, well, what about the Jew? Today they doesn't believe. The Bible says that God has not rejected in, in Romans 9, Romans 9, 1, He's not rejected His people. May it never be. He's not rejected those, that nation, the, 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 the Israelites. Paul would say there's a reason why is because he's a Jew and he believes on Jesus. And there's many and there's a remnant that had believed on Jesus. And so God had not rejected them. So the question is, what is our relationship with Israel today? What is our relationship with them? Paul says they're beloved. Romans 11. They're beloved because of for the sake of the forefathers. They're, they're loved for the sake of the patriarchs. That's God's attitude toward them who haven't believed. They're beloved. And he hasn't forgot about them. And God's got something special for them that he wants to do. And, and, and he says to Paul in many places he's going to bring them to, to himself, but he's going to use us that we might stir them to jealousy. He's using the church. He's using those who believe on Jesus to stir them to understand that, that we also need to be included. We need to make sure we're part of, the, of, of God's people, of God's children, by turning to Jesus. We need to evangelize the Jews. We need to evangelize the world. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We need to make sure we don't leave the Jew out. Don't forget them because he was intended for them to come, but they didn't do it. Some did, but most of them didn't. But he he's wants us to stir them to jealousy. And God had told them that he would stir them to jealousy. By a nation, it's not a nation. That's us. God wants to use us. I heard the testimony of a Jew, and he was on the radio yesterday, and you've heard me talk about Amir Safadi. 
He had he was in he was in foster care and he was down in his life, ready to, to commit suicide. But a campus crusade for Christ had gone to Israel and was holding a crusade. And before he was going to commit suicide, he thought, you know, there's something in my heart tells me that I need to give the world one more chance. Something I need to know. There's maybe something that I need to know that I'm missing. And he went to this crusade. He saw it in the paper with every advertisement. And he went to it. And that, that night, after going to it, he said, he, he asked Jesus to, to work in his life, to help him through what he was going through. He found Jesus. God wants to use us to bring the Jew to Jesus, but not just the Jew. It's for everybody. We need, to tell, we need to tell it to everybody because we're children of God and children of Abraham through faith in Jesus, not through anything else, not through going to church. We can beat it up. We can meet in a cow lot. We can meet in a smutty pig pen if it, if it was that way. They did it in, in, in World War II. Uh, Corey Ten Boone had Bible studies in her in that place, and the reason why they, they got by is because it was so bad. He got the reason he got by is because it smelled so bad, and now there was the fleas were so bad that the, the the Nazis wouldn't come in there to shut them down. And they had church. They they shared the gospel there and, and touched uh, ladies' lives in that place where Corey Timmon was at. The church is, is us that believe on Jesus today. It's not that building there. We use that building. That's been dedicated to the Lord. But we're the church. The ones who believe on Jesus. We're the children of Abraham if you believe on Jesus. But God said about the Jew, He says in, in Hosea 5.15, I'll return to my place until you, you acknowledge your guilt. Hosea 5.15. That's why he's in heaven. Because they have not acknowledged their guilt yet. Their national guilt of saying no to Jesus and crucifying him with the help of Pontius Pilate and all the Gentiles, the Roman soldiers. Me and you. And when Jesus comes, it'll be because, it'll be because he, they, they have turned to their guilt and he's coming back from his place in heaven, as the Bible says. But till then, God's called us to share this good news with everybody. To share with a, with a Gentile. To share it for sure, share it with a Jew. Don't leave them out. Because God's heart is, he, he, they're beloved is God's attitude. They're beloved because of the patriarchs, because of the promise to Abraham, because of the promises that he made to all the people of the Old Testament. God's called us to understand that we're children of Abraham through faith in Jesus. I want to end this morning on a scripture that just jumped out at me. I've read it many times. I love this when God's word just jumps out at me. Because I, I read it one time and, 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 and I think I, I understand it. And then later on, it just a, a fresh way, in a different kind of way, or a fresh way, either one or both, they just jump out at me. I mean, John 111 is one of those that jumped out at me as I was preparing this message this morning. After all we've seen here, they have the children of Abraham through faith in Jesus. You look in John 1, verse 11. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He came to the Jews. He came to them who had every reason, every right, every motivation, every opportunity, every thing God could give that they might come to Jesus. And they turned him down and said, get rid of that man, crucify him. But God ain't forgot about him. But, if, but, but to everyone who did receive him, hallelujah, he gave the right to become children of God. Everyone who would say, Jesus, lead my life. You're the Lord. You're the Savior. That person becomes the children of God. You see, God's people was a small group when the Jews were there in their own nation before Jesus came. And there was a few by the time of Jesus that was, that was worshiping God that would come in 
from other nations to Jerusalem. But that when Jesus, after Jesus came, all of a sudden it's like a bomb went off. Now everybody everywhere can become a child of God through faith in Jesus and depends on the cross what Christ has done. And today, anyone here can become a child of God through faith in Jesus and depends on only on what he did. Not on what I've done. Not on being, being a part of this church. Not, a, not on attending the church. Man, there's people that's been to church all their life that couldn't meet Jesus. They never, never trusted Jesus. That's true. There are pastors that need Jesus. There are people on our